hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big rap? shit. That's the XO. Big XO. shit, big XO. shit, big shit. Huh. Name, Name another podcast, podcast like, like this. Who gon' bring it to Name the table? Man. Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want. Who your Boss girlfriend talk. favorite? Yeah, everybody on. <laughs> It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not, you know, man. man. Man, we in Las Vegas, Nevada, man. What the heck? What, how we get up here? We flew. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> check it, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and guess who flew in to see us, man? I mean, one of the one and only, right? Yes, sir. What you think about it, man? We got Charleston White back on Boss Talk 101 for the second time, man. Yeah, yeah. By man. itself. You know, we had him where he was pushing different things, different agendas, mm -hmm. uh, helping people like he always do. But today we going in because we in Las Vegas. What's up, Charleston? Hey, what's up, brother? Man, you need to tell me what's going on, man. Uh, I mean, I can't keep up with you. Well, uh, you, you've been one of my biggest... Uh, Support us and, and, and one of my biggest uh, community partnerships. Hey, uh, man. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Ever since you gave me that award, uh, you, you've been rocking with me. Man, and, and it was a blessing. Yeah. Straight up blessing, up and down, man. Exactly. I, I, I told my, I always mess with her about y'all. I'll be like, man, I got to get with Charleston. I'm finna make a move. We finna help somebody. We finna do something. Yeah, man. She, <laughs> she, well, you still got footage you ain't released. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I, I just do that because I, I feel real special about it. That's it's something, good. I, I, good. most niggas don't do that. You know what I'm telling the truth. Yeah, Most yeah. of these niggas looking for views and everything else, Well, man. Uh, e everybody that's saying my name, uh, everybody that's mentioning my name, uh, on the internet is looking for views. Uh, if, if you say my name and, and, and you got a monetized YouTube account, uh, I'm gonna bring you at least two to three thousand dollars. Correct, and I'm looking for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. the reason why we we um we we mesh so well because we dug deep down past the clout, past all of that, and actually got to know you. Y'all the first pod. Y'all the first. I ain't gonna say podcast. Y'all the first black people uh, that have that have a platform uh, uh, other than his sister out of Washington D.C. Uh, uh, she used to be on a, a Reverend Al Sharpton's platform, uh, but but that was years ago. But y'all the first people with this platform to sit Charleston White down uh, and peel back the layers. Yeah, yeah. In, in a in a professional setting. Uh, in a professional manner, so uh, so uh, it, it blessed y'all like it blessed me. Man, I enjoy it, man. I don't think I would even be where I'm at right now if I hadn't got in touch with you, to be honest with you. But I think that's just God, man. I was about to say, that's the way I roll with it. Yeah, God just, has that plan. He yeah, knew yeah. I, I just know that I had to get a hold of you when I seen you. So, so this is what I've been noticing. What happened, right? So the the, the people that 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 fight with me, uh, that become my opposition. They 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 they're hot for like maybe two to four weeks, so they they trend for two to four weeks. Once once the the, the dust settle between me and them or, or me and their uh, altercation, then they don't have anything else to stand on. Yeah. What what separates Charleston White from from every other blogger from every other podcast is that Charleston White has something to stand on. Right. When you look past. The internet, when you look past the things that I say on the internet, uh, you can't beat what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't beat it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, so, that's, that's, so that's what's happening, uh, you know, in the, in the social media world with Charleston White. Wow. But I love, is it personally from a woman's perspective or from my perspective because not all women think like me. But um, I love the fact of honesty, the way how you just speak anything that's on the top of your mind because there's so many people out there who high side, who just say what they think you want to hear just yeah. to please the masses, but you don't care about pleasing anybody. You say what you believe, but then also you do research behind it. Yeah. And that's what I love about what you do. Uh, from, from 2009 to, to 2012, uh, I would spend anywhere from 12 to 18 hours a day in a college library. So you're talking about for three years straight. I'm not in prison. I wasn't in no jail cell. And I was, and I was catching the bus to do this. So uh, I was acquiring knowledge, right? So I know statistics. Uh, so I don't, I wasn't reading Google. I was in a library pulling books off the shelf. 
uh, when, when I got on the internet and, and started doing research, I didn't Google a title. I didn't put a title in Google and try to get the information. Mm -hmm. I went into library, the library databases. And, and what I mean by that, you read what, what scholars, what experts wrote mm -hmm. uh, from around the world. So I went into scholarly databases and got information from scholars, uh, uh, the world's best scholars, read their minds, read their books. Uh, and, and so then I started working in the community. And uh, I started at the top, right? Uh, government, uh, courts, uh, juvenile, uh, legislation. Then I went to the bottom. I mean, to the bottomless pit, all the way in the ghetto. Mm. And then worked my way back up <laughs> to government, right? Uh, because up here, I was talking down to those people because I wasn't down there with them. Mm -hmm. I, ain't no, you know, I, I didn't see no dirty children. I was traveling around the country uh, advocating for kids in the juvenile system. Uh, I didn't know that mothers took their children to have neighborhood fights. Huh? I would, that's in the hood. They took their kids to have. Yeah. You, must not, yeah. you must not be from the hood. You can't be. And you, and you can't be is, on this Facebook is, if you ain't seen yeah, that. You can't be. This is common practice in the black community. That's how they get down. This is common practice in the black community. Children seeing their mothers fight. Children seeing their their daddies jump on their mothers. I know uh, that, this is yeah. this is children seeing their their mothers and their sisters fight because they don't slept with the same man, and mm -hmm. and, and, and their brother is really their cousin. So this is normal behavior, but when you're working in legislation, when you're teaching classes at the college, university, when you're traveling around the country advocating for this, you don't see this. So you can't really speak on it. So when you do see it, you speak down on it. So when I came down from up here and started working from the classy lady in the projects uh, from Stop Six, I got a different perspective. And, and, and what I realized is an uh, uh, ant, and a, and a giraffe, they don't have the same view. Yeah. A giraffe will never see what an ant sees. Mm -hmm. Wow. But what I want to know is where did the, um, the drive to go to the library for three years, like you said, to search for that knowledge? Where did that come from? Why did you do that? I was running from the streets. Uh, um, I had just had my daughter. And... Uh, and I wanted to give my children something different. And so I was pursuing a college degree. I was going to study law school. I was a pre-law student at Texas Wesleyan University. So I just completed uh, you know, two years at the community college. And so uh, I wanted to be a juvenile worker. I wanted to be a juvenile probation officer. Uh, I don't have any felony convictions. I had just had my second child, my daughter. So uh, I wanted to give them something different. So uh, leaving the streets, the uh, only thing I knew I was good at was academics. Mm -hmm. So, shit, that's what I went to. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you're talking, sorry, but you're talking about, okay, your daughter. I want to touch on something, really, um, that I've never asked you before. And, and I see you on social media. You advocate for not blacks, as you said, yeah. state, but for niggas. Yeah. The right? nigger nation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't really too much care for black people. Okay. But... I noticed that your children are biracial. Yeah, I wanted my babies to have good hair. <laughs> That's it. I, I only reason I got mixed babies, I didn't want my babies having nappy nigga hair. Cause we was taught that nappy hair was bad. All niggas I knew grew up putting S curls and, and, and shit on, and, and, and dukes on their hair. Uh, all the women I saw from the 80s on up, I remember it used to be shameful for black women to wear weave. Mm. They would sneak it in, and you didn't know they had it. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I wanted my children to have good hair, so I had mixed kids. That's it. I was 14 years old, I called home and told my mama, mama, when I grow up, I'm gonna have a baby by a Mexican. She said, son, you need to focus on trying to get out that juvenile facility. You too young to be thinking about having kids. But why Mexican and not white or any uh, other race? Well, because well, well, growing up, uh, Mexican was easy to have sex with, and they was more submissive. They yeah, was not, easy to have sex yeah, yeah. with. Yeah, Mexican girls and white girls was easy to have sex with growing up. And they, uh -huh. and they were more submissive, right? They, they would steal from their dads. Uh, hey, uh, get your daddy car key. Black girls wouldn't do that. So I learned uh, 
that that other cultures, <coughs> other uh, <coughs> other women from other cultures, are more submissive to black men than black women. I learned that as a kid. But you could have easily went and got you another black woman, black, black woman black from women, a different black, culture. Black women don't mind. I want somebody to but mind. But it depends on the culture. They don't mind. Well, the other cultures, you get to kick them in their ass. See, African women get to African men get to beat their women. But when they get here to America, they really can't beat on them. Arab men get to beat their women. So, uh, yeah, I could get one and <laughs> kick them in their ass. But I want one to mind from conversation. And uh, black women, you sometimes, you got to kick them in their ass. White woman, you can tell a bitch, shut up. And she'll shut up. Mexican woman, once y'all start fucking, you got to kick in their ass. Because she going to be feisty and want to fight. But they mind, and they ain't gonna put the police on you. Uh, the Mexican woman ain't with really putting child support on on, on the dad. Uh, so I the want, one thing that I, I wanted I, to be a sorry motherfucker. The one thing that I don't <laughs> like, because a lot of times, like when you keep saying black woman, um, you remind me of Kevin Samuels because he always say black woman. That's all we know. But then there are black women in different cultures. We don't date like, black. I'm, I'm Jamaican. You ain't black. I, then you, what am I? Jamaican. I'm black. You Jamaican. No. You Jamaican. It's a difference, huh? It's a difference. Okay, describe the difference. Uh, if I go to what your- What color is if, my skin? If, if I, what if, color is my skin? Yellow. Okay, and it derived from? Uh, even white derived from black. Even white derived from black. All colors in the color spectrum come from the color black. But- Y'all have been classified as Jamaicans. We still haven't been identified nor classified. We were just given a color. When I fill out a paperwork here in the States, it doesn't say but, Jamaican anywhere. But black is a, it's not a person. It's, that's not a noun. Mm -hmm. that, that, it's, it's, that's more of an adjective, isn't it? Well, mm -hmm. you, how can you describe me as being black? You have a name. You're Jamaican. And you're American. Well... I'm black American. Okay, I'm black you're, Jamaican. It don't say that. You're making something up now. <laughs> <laughs> it don't say that. Our paperwork, we have, to, we have to check something. When you go back home, you don't check nothing. You're automatic Jamaican. Right. I'm not automatic American. I'm automatic black. Black people aren't American. We had to be given American rights. You see what I'm saying? So uh, when we say black, we talking us. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't us. Mm. Don't y'all got Jamaican food? Yes. Don't y'all have a Jamaican culture? Yes. We don't. You have an American culture. What, what's in, Texas, in Texas, you have soul food. What's Barbecue. So, uh, that, what, who, that's our culture? Mm -hmm. Black slaves didn't barbecue. S mm -hmm. Slaves didn't barbecue. Slaves didn't create that. Mm -hmm. Soul food. Uh, pig intestines. Pig feet. So what did slaves used to eat? The slop that their masters gave them, like the dogs. What you would give your dogs. That's what they ate. And that became part of what we ate. So you say that's our culture. No. Come on, don't do us like that, please. No. Uh, I understand you play devil's advocate. But nobody in this world mm -hmm. have been done like the person, mm -hmm. not the African. See, this is what people forget. It was a small portion of Africans who was transported over here and was made to be slaves. It was a small portion. The rest was created and bred. They had slave form, but they bred this because slavery, international slavery, was only legal for a small amount of time before the world said, no, stop this. So America kept saying, fuck y'all, we ain't for to stop this. They started making slaves, right? Mm -hmm. So the first generation of Africans who came over here to be slaves, they weren't niggas. They was Africans. The ones who was born from the Africans Right, the ones who was forced to have sex and sleep with this one, those that was born on this land under slavery, into slavery, they were niggers. Mm -hmm. Them wasn't black people, them was niggers. 
They was called, nigga. Come here, nigga. Shut up, nigga. Fuck you doing around here, nigga. He didn't have a name. So those people never thought to go back to Africa. They didn't know no language. So we those seeds. We are not African seeds. We are not we don't have no African bloodline other than what the white boy have. We was born to slaves. Nobody else was done that. And nobody else was done how those people was done. I know because in Jamaica, when I did some research on it, you know, because we had um, Arawak's Indian was in Jamaica first. But then when the Spaniards came there and enslaved them, the, they couldn't deal with being enslaved, so a lot of them were dying off. Man. So whenever the, they went and got Africans and started transporting them here, they left a small amount of them there and realized that they can deal with the slavery. So that's when they started transporting a lot more Africans there as well. Now, now look, at, look at us. Why are we better in sports than anybody? Why are we born with this, this body and this physique? Because they strategically say, put this nigga with that nigga. Look how fine she is. Look how big she is. Put them two niggas together. Make him sleep with his mama. Make him sleep with his sister. Make, make him breed with his auntie. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a fine nigga there. Boy, we need plenty more niggas like him. Where you get that nigga from? Look at his mama. Break the take. Come here, give me a gal. Come here, heifer. Look at her. Now come here, nigga. Come look at the look at the boy right here. Ooh, we. You think you just like the dogs. And it was paperwork on these niggas. Who they was bred, who bought them, who owned them, how they died. All this is documents. So no, not only did they take the body and breed them, they took the minds. We got to develop a system that these niggas don't come to our house at nighttime and cut our throats. How can we take these niggas off the chains like we do the horses? We got to break these niggas like we break horses. And they created a system to do that. We're going to make this woman make sure this boy won't ever stand up and talk back like we had to kill his uncle. You had that book that talked about that. Yeah, I've, I've, read, I've read a lot of books. That's just the history. Jews wasn't done like this. Ain't nobody been done like this here. And it still go on today. They still fucking our minds. They took our minds. We are walking empty. We, we, we like walking dead people. They tell us what we like. Why you think all of us wear Michael Jordan tennis shoes? All of us got Gucci belts. Why you think we all do the exact same thing like robots? All of our women got eyelashes. None of them don't do it. None of them don't do it. None of, I, none of us don't do nothing. None of us have separated from the pack. They got a button on us because they know us better than we know us because we don't know nothing about the niggas. They teach their children about the niggas and we don't know nothing about the nigga. Wow. Yeah, I, uh, well, just recapping back on when we met the last time, you know, a lot of niggas told me the black guy, they weren't niggas. No, these ain't niggas, no, so don't, don't call them right, niggas. Don't you, please, don't ever confuse these you. black people <laughs> as niggas, please. They me, so I'm being quiet for these black people because they say, man, let him talk, man. You didn't let him talk enough. Well, you, I hope you black people understand I'm letting Charleston White talk today. We up here in Vegas, man, and we bringing it to you. So, man, let me ask you this, man. You've been going through a lot. You've been on Vlad since you left my show in yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yeah. You've been... Uh, You've been on a lot of different yeah. uh, platforms. Uh, Trio Talk, No Peel Talk. Yeah, yeah, you, shout out to Yeah, man. Texas. Yeah, yeah, and I noticed when I be, yeah, they be alluding to a lot of stuff that be happening with me, but they don't say no name. I say names because I don't care. I want to see everybody get their shine. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I definitely, uh, I seen that episode, man, and uh, I definitely like the way that you handled yourself in the questioning. I seen you with the mob, James. You got a lot that been going on lately. So what is up with, I mean, because I seen that Vlad episode with mob, James, Lately, yeah, he a lying motherfucker. No, nah, he said that basically you uh, set the phone up and you know, yeah, he like lied, you set man. this whole deal up. Yeah, What's yeah, well, just explain to us man, a little bit man. on what what happened with that. Uh, let me just say this. He had called me two times prior to that about me saying fuck the Crips and the Bloods, 
These are guys who want me to be sympathetic to gang banging. They want me to be empathetic to the fact that their brothers died gang banging. Their homeboys died gang banging. But they never want me to be empathetic to the fact of who they killed. Mm. Who house they shot up. They never bring up the victims that have been left behind in the wake of gang banging. Right? They right. want me just to respect, man, what well, we, man, nah, homie, it's wrong. It's, it, there's a scripture that says, when I was a child, I did childish things. When I became a man, I put away my childish ways and I thought like a man. And I was always told that men don't embrace gangs. Men stand on their own. And when you know you done done wrong, man, I was wrong for that. You can't never get them to say they was wrong. They give you a but. They give you an excuse. So Mob James was invited by me through Unk. I don't know these guys in California. When I look at California, I don't see no successful men that I want to connect to and be with. Other than Uncle Henny. Prior to that, man, those are has-beens. Used to be's. Some is never was. They never was shit. But a gangbanger. So I connect with Uncle Henny. He messed with Gangster Chronicles and all those guys from the West Coast. All my people from the entertainment industry said, Charleston, you not going to go nowhere with those guys from the West Coast. I said, I'm going with Gangster Chronicles. I was warned. Don't, man, them guys are failures. Them guys ain't going nowhere in the industry. They ain't going nowhere. But you the hot, they need you, Charleston. You don't need those guys. I said, no, nah, I'm going to go with Gangster Chronicles. I like Uncle Henny and them. So I walked away from the wild and that side of the crew. Come on, with Nick Cannon then? With them people in Atlanta. Okay. To come over here to be with these losers. But, man, I'm going to rock with these people because I'm going to put my nigga Dewberry in them on. I'm going to put Percy on. And we go blow this thing up from the south. Hmm. I'm going to give them niggas a platform because they can be heard down here in the south through their testimonies. And they can make a little money coming down here through the south because we got a platform for them. They don't have no platform for us on the west coast. Ain't nobody listening to them up there. They're not working in schools. They're not working in the juvenile detention centers. They don't have a platform for us. We got a platform for them. That's why Mob James was down here trying to talk to kids through me. Yeah, I heard you say that. So you saw with the summer program when we mm -hmm. done the spring break. Everybody was there through me. You can't talk to no kid unless you coming through me. So let's get, get that understood. So Uncle Henny say, Mob James come down here. But I didn't know Uncle Henny was gonna pay him. I ain't mm. pay him a dime. He didn't come down here voluntarily on his own dime. He was paid. They just didn't want nobody to know that. So he brought other people. Hey, he gonna be on the podcast. Two days before that, I shared a conversation. Mob James called me. He's never been able to call me directly. He can't call my number and I don't have his number to call him. So he lying saying I called him and apologized. Well, I heard him say that on the Unk have always been the middleman mediator. Always. Me and him have never talked directly one-on-one. -on -one. He would have to call somebody and say, hey, can I get Charleston number? He's never been able to call me down. I don't fool with them niggas like that. Them niggas ain't got nothing going on in life for me to have for them niggas to have my phone number. None of them niggas. So he called somebody two days before that. They text me, hey, man, Mob Jane wants you to give him a call. So shoot me his number. Shoot him my number. So we talk. He tell me, man, my brother died and woo, woo, woo. I'm not with it no more, man, but it's like you taking our hope. I'm not trying to give hope to no grown man. I don't give a damn about a grown black motherfucker or a grown nigga making wrong choices and decisions. That go from... Nipsey her hustle, that go to DMX, that go to George Floyd, that go to my brother in prison. That go to my 17-year-old son. Give a damn about no nigga making wrong choices and decisions. Nigga, and you grown? Fuck you grown niggas and how y'all feel about what I'm saying. I got a youth organization, nigga. Turn, 
Turn me off if you bother about what I'm saying. But I stand on the fact it's fuck the Crips and the Bloods and whoever died behind it, they died in vain. What about the people they killed? I get it. Because you never hear that side. So let me finish, right? So, so Unk invited him to come down and getting paid. He bring Raymond Washington's daughter and, and her baby daddy. We already know they coming. So I get on the podcast that Tuesday and talk about the Mob James conversation. Unks tell me, hold that for Thursday. We ain't going to give them all of it, right? This shit is all, we know he coming. We know what we going to talk about. We already know how he feel. He already know how I feel. This might get volatile. I got an AR-15 pistol, nigga, with over 300 rounds out in the car, just in case it go wrong. Wow. I got another pistol on me, nigga, with 30 rounds, 15 in the clip and 15 in the pocket. Mm -hmm. I pack this every day though. Mm -hmm. Not only that, I got my other nigga there, my other nigga there, and my other nigga there with Dewberry there. Just in case this nigga want to trip about anything. So when I see him, I see he got the Pyru colors on with the Pyru hat from head to toe. I notice he go back to the car and get his pistol. Mm -hmm. I notice the two buttons on his shirt. They watch me sit the phone up. And if you, watch, if you watch my podcast from Instagram, from YouTube to Facebook, you'll see all the recordings for Game Related is from that side view right there. Mm -hmm. Because I sit my phone. What he just say, man, you need to get you one of them things to hold yeah, the phone. Yeah, yeah, that's what I ain't saying. got now. What I tell him, man, I'm hully gully. <laughs> I sit it on the side right there, hully gully. So he make it. They, every, every, they know that. I don't know I got that pistol on me every day. You ain't going to catch me without it. Every day, nigga, and it's, uh, and it's 50 other niggas in the studio. You think we gonna let a nigga out of California come down here and do anything to me? We they can talk that shit all they want to, my nigga. But, uh, nigga, I ain't, I'm well protected. By God. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, right? So when we get on the podcast, the whole question is, they want me to understand it. And I'm saying it's illogical. It's immoral. It don't make sense. How can you understand something like killing your own kind? So I, my question to him is, I'm not talking to you if you're not in it. But if you keep putting yourself in it with the butts. You keep putting yourself in it with the butts. So, I, so he make a test. And so you against me? I say, yeah, I'm against you if you still gang banging. Yeah, I heard that. His statement was, you or nobody else can get me to go back to being like my old ways. You can't trick me to go back to being how I used to be. In 19 years, I ain't never screamed Ma, Paru, blood, and such, such. And within two minutes. So everybody know on the podcast, I might jump up and throw my hands up. I got tired of him saying as if I'm a kid. If I was still gangbanging, me and you would be fighting. You trying to bully me, homie. You niggas really think y'all some bullies. If you're a trust, I'll put my, you won't do a motherfucking thing to me, nigga. You steady go keep talking to me like you, man, come on, man, you got me, come on, you really go keep, you, if I was gangbanging. Nah, homie, nah, you can't. I keep a gun on me so niggas like you won't do what you think you can do to me, nigga, and you, did, and you didn't do it, right? So. He telling me, he telling me if I was still screaming Pyru. In my mind, you still screaming it. It's in your heart, nigga. So I'm for to show these people. We on national stage. I got judges. I got politicians. I got all these people watch my podcast. I'm for to show them that you niggas ain't worth it. You still gang banging. And they need to keep y'all locked up longer. It can't, you, 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 so... I kept pushing that button. I kept pushing that button. I seen that. I kept pushing that button. So when he made that statement and said, if I was still screaming Pyru, me and you would be fighting. Man, y'all really think y'all better than us, homie. For you to tell, for you to sit up and say that. So when I stand up and say that, it tricked him. Now he want to stand up. Now we nose to nose, forehead to forehead, lip to lip. Now I done got the people to see what they needed to see, nigga. Say you wanted from Mob James Pyru blood. And I quickly told him, so you still with it then, huh, James? <laughs> Ooh, I say, look at this. Ooh, look at this sucker. 
he fell for the bait. He draped in the colors. Look how Satan operate. Satan is the master of deception. Mm. Look at this 50 year old man trying to deceive the world. He done killed and robbed and beat people in the name of mob James Piru. And he stood up and confessed it with his mouth cause it's still in his heart. What's in your heart don't come out of your mouth. I don't care how long that devil lay dormant. It's still there. Yeah. It ain't been removed. That's why you drove from California to Texas 20 hours with a gun. As a convicted felon with a grand, you a granddaddy, right? Yeah. I wouldn't dare do no such thing. And I got to go back home to the babies to go represent what? What was you representing, brother? You wasn't representing fatherhood. You wasn't representing grandfatherhood. And you sure wasn't representing because you got to come to my community to event the next day that you getting secretly paid for. That you getting secretly paid for. Wow. Yeah, let me ask you this. So, what, when, See, that's how real it get, but they don't want to be real. Mm -hmm. So this is what me and, du me and Dewberry go do the interview, right? Immediately after that, he called Unk and apologized after he walked off stage. He wasn't even in the car good. That's what Unk say, though. That's what Unk tell us. He called and apologized immediately. Mm -hmm. He felt bad. Oh, he was felt bad. He could. That's what Unk tell us. But I called and apologized. Nigga, I ain't never apologized to no nigga when I think I'm right. Mm. I think I'm right. Well, Vlad was saying that, uh, what people were saying that Vlad, for him to ask those questions that he had asked while he was on there about him being a convicted felon and still carrying a gun could have got him incriminated. I really didn't know where that came from, but I was looking at, you know, some of the uh, Well, backlash. like, listen, like he told me, I said, James, unless you still committing crimes, are you still committing crime, Jane? He told me, I'm not answering that. I'm not telling you that. Well, you got on Vlad TV and confessed it. I asked you, the brother asked you, Jane, why would you, why, unless you still committing crime gang banging, Jane, why would my words affect you? He told me, I'm not going to tell you if I'm still committing crimes or not. Well, why would you get on Vlad TV and confess to pos possession of a firearm across state lines? Why would you confess to that? Mm-hmm. On Vlad TV. And this is what I was told the next day when it started going viral. Vlad TV, I already done called James. They told him, no, nah, man, we ain't doing no Vlad TV interview. He just want to be messy. He just want to capitalize over. But I know Vlad go pay you for something like this here. Yeah. Mm. Vlad go give you anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 for a good interview like this here. She And I know niggas need that money. Mm. Yeah, so I he, know niggas need that money, man. So do you feel like, you know, because nobody wasn't checking for uh, Mob James. Nobody like was looking up Mob, man. I done made him hot like Death Row again. But it's going to fade away. Because when you look at him, what else he got? Yeah. He ain't got no charisma, no character. He ain't got... Once they stop talking about Charleston White, he ain't got nothing, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> Once they stop talking about me, they ain't got nothing no more, nigga. I'm the, I'm the topic. So the next day, I believe he said when y'all went to the event, yeah. uh, he was saying that you said that you felt like that he came down there to, you, that he was coming down there to set you guys, set you up. I, I, no, I felt like that once that, that the, the Abdul Chappelle and the other nigga, yeah, that, the other nigga made the video and said that him and Mob James came down there to check me. The nigga in the video said that Mob James then went on the ground and he went in the air. So... I don't see this video till Sunday, right? My, I was there Friday night at the camp to get it going. Saturday, my son going to camp. So I wasn't there Saturday and Sunday. I'm the one who helped raise the money for the event, get the promotions going, right? So I see this video Sunday about this nigga hollering about, they done come to Texas to check me. Nigga, what? So then I see the video with Dewberry. Hey man, unk, what's up with these nigga? These your people, unk. Fuck you, man, they got nigga, fuck them, nigga, what you? So Unks and all, man, I don't even know them niggas. Mm. So we had to sort that out. So I go to being disrespectful to everybody. Nigga, I'm finna turn on Unk. I'm finna get into it with Dewberry. Nigga, what you doing on here with this? So Dew said, nah, homie, I'm, I told that nigga I'm not having no discussion about Charleston. So we get down to the bottom of it, right? Get everything sorted out. See that this, this nigga comp the nigga, Mob James don't know him. He playing for clickbait, right? So by this time, I done, I done went off the handle. 
So one of the elders from Santana Block Crip uh, give me a call, man, SAG. The elder SAG. They call him the Crip on, on, on YouTube. Elder brother. I got a lot of respect for him. I met him about okay. I met him about five years ago. He from Cali. He from Cali. Okay. Uh, 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 one of the original baby Crips. Okay. Uh, so I met SAG about five years ago. So SAG reached out to me, uh, you know, with the, with the, with the grandfather, Uncle Tone. Hey, cuz. <laughs> Say, cuz. What's up with you and, you and, you and, you and Ray Shana, cuz? She say you tagging her and shit on, on Facebook, cuz, and going off on her talking about, uh, you know, you trying, you know, woo woo. So I'm like, no, nah, Sag, man, they got this nigga. I'm trying to see who this nigga is. Talking about he in my town, checking me. It's a green light on me. So he say, so I give him the names of the people who are all involved, right? So we get everything sorted out from Cali to Texas. So you see them titles done change. Yeah. You see them niggas' titles done change. So SAG, so I tell SAG, uh, SAG said, cuz, Rayshana don't know cuz. She ain't know that nigga. She went down there with Mob James to see her sister on a free trip. Her and her baby daddy, they fuck around, they real tight cuz. They enjoy each other, they just hanging. Woo, 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 they ain't got nothing to do with none of that cuz. You wrong. You know, she ain't got nothing to do with that. So, so make that right for me cuz, so call her. So I call Ray Shana, me and her talk. So uh, he hit me the next day and said, uh, say cuz apologize to her in a video. Cause she's still getting phone calls. So uh, that's the apology I made directly to Ray Shana Washington. Okay. Uh, for thinking she had something to do with whoever that Compton Crip nigga was. Okay. Hollin' he came down here with them, right? Mm -hmm. he, he put them in that. So uh, I never called Mob James, homie. So uh, about three days ago, or f it's been about five days ago, him and Unc called me on the phone. Okay. And we had another discussion again. Guess how that discussion went? The same way it went on that podcast. Oh, so it got amped back up again. It, man, I don't care. You can't make me understand it. The gang violence. That you want me to understand, the, man? I don't care who died behind it. What about the people y'all killed and still killing? The kids, the mothers, the sisters, all the suffering of fifty years, and you still want to hold it in your heart? There's no way God can live in a heart with a gang honor in it. Wow! You can't make me believe the spirit of God can exist in the heart of them niggas. That's why they look, that's why they die before us the way they die. So no, man, they cursed. And I believe in my heart and my soul and my mind that everything attached to the name Crip and Blood is cursed with destruction and death. Until they repent. What does the word repentance mean? To turn away from. Yeah, yeah. So nah, homie, I, I told Unc, I don't want nothing to do with them niggas. I don't want to be on digital soapbox media. I don't want nothing. Anything tied to them. I don't want nothing. I started game related, gang related. I, anywhere I go is go get numbers. Anywhere me and Dewberry go, nigga, we go rock. We don't need them. If I stop working with Unc, you will never see them niggas work with kids again. You will never see them niggas in no juvenile detention centers. I was doing it before the internet, and I'm still doing it today. You see when I walk through that door, when we get getting them kids clothes fresh out the facility, yeah. you don't see no, nobody on the phone walking and talking with me. All right, it's just me and you. Picking them up, taking them home, taking them out to eat. You don't see no nigga doing that with me. So how dare a nigga say anything to me? Anything, man. Yeah, so so moving on, let, let me ask you this right here about, because uh, I hadn't got to talk to you since you uh, had the issue with the Asians. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so had that been pretty much cleaned up now? Oh, uh, uh, what you mean cleaned far, up? Far, as far as, uh, did, did they anybody got, apologize? Because it was one guy that went on Vlad and spoke about you on there. Oh, uh, no, ain't now an Asian apologize. Ain't now a black person stood with me and sided with me. Yeah, I was out there on a the fight on my own for the nigga folks. You didn't see Jim Mob James, them standing with me. 
You didn't see nobody standing with me. Didn't nobody make no public statement, say, yeah, I'm rocking with Charleston. Everybody went against me, nigga. I don't say, listen, the Bible says when Jesus came, his people did not accept him not. Now, I ain't saying I'm Jesus. I ain't saying I'm Jesus, my nigga. But nigga, I'm the realest, the rawest, the truest motherfucking thing, nigga, talking on the earth right now, nigga. And when I get through talking, when you look at what I do in real life, nigga, you can't beat me. You can't find a nigga in America, nigga, that can beat me and what I do for this nation. Call niggas, not black folk. <laughs> <laughs> you what you got? You, you, you what you got? I know you had you. We in now, so it's on. You know what I'm saying? So when when you went on Vlad last time, me and you he had, paid me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you he spoke, you said you wasn't gonna go. You <laughs> told me you wasn't <laughs> gonna go. He offered me some good goddamn money, man. And then you said that he helped you about your channel. I seen yeah, that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, well, I lied. Yeah, he yeah, didn't I, help yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I lied. I was just blowing smoke up his ass <laughs> and clapping for him. No, I got another white boy out of Florida, and I got a mean nigga out the Midwest that's cold with it, nigga. I got three YouTube channels, nigga. They can't fuck with me no more. <laughs> so, I can, yeah, yeah, now nah, Vlad ain't helped the motherfucking so thing. Nigga, I was just, no, I was so just fucking, I was just, I, I was just fucking with the Vlad haters. You know, he the nigga, watching you. Yeah, yeah, he watched me like a motherfucker. I was just fucking with the Vlad haters that hate on him, because he ain't no bad pecklewood. Yeah, yeah, he a good Jew white boy. Okay. Uh, and he helped niggas. He just ain't helped me. Yeah, he give me some game, though. He give me some game like a motherfucker, but nah, he ain't helped me, man. I got a white boy. Shout out to white boy uh, 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 Lockdown Productions. White boy, Big Matt, man, from White yeah, Boy Radio. Yeah, I remember you yeah, saying something yeah, about a long time ago. Yeah, cold white boy, man. Yeah, cold white boy. So I, I've been walking the streets with you, man. People recognize you, man. They love they you. They love me, man. They, hey, hey, wherever we at, they, they stopping us. They want to take pictures with you. We shut down you. the gas station yesterday, That's what I'm man. saying. Yeah. Well, how is it that, <laughs> man, people listen to you. People love you. I hear They this. know that voice. I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and they told me, they was like, Turn up the knob a little bit, you know. You had Charleston on your channel. You gotta, you gotta turn it up, man. There's something good about y'all. So <laughs> it, it, we get them kind of comments all the time when we go to different cities, man. So appreciate you for that, for uh, sure. Yeah, man. Uh, real recognize real. Uh, in 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 darkness, uh, when, when the light come on, man, the people in the dark ain't never like that. Hey, man, goddamn, man, cut the they light, they they lock, they they eyes gotta adjust. And and I come. Uh, with a shining bright light, man, uh, and I ain't scared of nothing. They want me to fear something, right? Everybody want me to, man, they go kill. They want me to be afraid. Say you want it. They want me to be afraid, and I ain't afraid. Yeah. Everybody want me to be afraid. They've got my address online. Everybody want me to be afraid, and I ain't afraid. Yeah, and yeah. that's, that's I, what they hate. I, I tripped because when we took you down to that uh, event, that Fast Bash, or wherever we went, when I took you to June nineteenth down there in uh, Jefferson, um, everybody just gravitate to you, man. The young dude, the young people. Is yeah, what yeah. The young people you. love me. How does that make you feel that the young people and, and and there's so many like what you say about the mob, James, and all the different people, the older guys. Um, it's a difficult thing to connect to the youth, and that's where the change comes from. Yeah, that's, that's, you can see, that's they can't connect with the youth. They can't. Ain't nobody listening to a Mob James interview, really. Ain't no young people really into that shit. I'm for the youth. Helping young people excel. Hype to buy hype youth outreach. Anthony Dewberry came up with that name. Wow. When we sat down and say, man, we go create a youth organization. Anthony Dewberry came up with the name Hype to Bot Hype. I love the name. Hype, we're hyped about helping young, young people, people excel, excel in all aspects of their lives by working and helping to provide alternatives and resources. I got a question about alternatives that. Alternatives and resources. resources. Alternatives and resources, right? My thing about it is I know that you've been helping a lot of young people, or should I say young males. I'm not, um, yeah, I help little hoes too. I help them little hoes. <laughs> uh, I help young girls too. Yeah, I just try not to because we don't have a bunch of women working with us. But okay. I get them out of jail too. I was wondering because I know you help a lot of yeah you, yeah yeah I get the I, males yeah, yeah. I, I help them with clothes the uh, uh, I get I help them with jobs but but as far as mentoring and and and, and putting all of our energy uh, uh, we I, we try to stay away from the girls uh, I've been doing this for ten years I've never been accused of anything I've never been accused of anything yeah so uh, because I protected the the character the integrity and the reputation of my organization. Meaning, I got a lot of guys come home from prison that work with me 
But if I catch you fucking on these boys' mamas, if I know you the kind of homeboy that's, that's, that's weak below the waist, you can't work with me. I don't put you before these kids, nigga, and, and they wake up and you coming out their mama's bedroom. I don't sleep with these children's mothers like the little league football players. Uh, my character and my reputation in the city of Fort Worth and the work that I do is upstanding with black women. They don't catch me looking at their ass and titties. I don't secretly come on to them. I ain't in their inbox. My reputation is upstanding because we strictly stay focused on their boys. And, and, and I know we can get the parents once they see the impact we have on the children. So fuck you, mama. I cuss you out behind this boy, side rad bitch. And me and the boy might fall out eventually because I done cussed his mama out. But nigga, I'm here for you and I quit you behind your stupid ass mama. But I see you again because I work in the prison system. Nigga, you either go deal with me on the streets or deal with me in the juvenile system or you go see me in prison or when you come home from prison, I'm the one with the program f to help you re-enter back into society. So at some point, young nigga, you got to cross paths with Mr. Charleston. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what the young niggas know. These old niggas just talking, sitting back getting drunk, watching me on the internet. They ain't got nothing for the young nigga. Can't, they can't even get a job. How they go help the young nigga? I got a direct access to the American Airlines getting kids job. Show me a nigga, they, they just talking. Man, he said this, sorry motherfucker. <laughs> you sitting I, I around I heard this. you mention <laughs> it the last time, that program. How many kids have you actually gotten on mm -hmm. over there? Oh uh, shit, I don't know how many get on. I just refer them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many can get on. I just know alternatives and resources. I'm connected to the alternatives and the resources. Let me ask you this, do you care about, what about these youngsters that rap? The NBA young boys, the Pooh Shysters, they, they, they locked up right now. Yeah, yeah, I love them young niggas. So, yeah, they, they, they where they need up. to be, they where they need to be. Okay, um, <laughs> um, when they come home, we gotta help them too. Uh, well, you gotta watch them. Uh, uh, you provide the alternatives and the resources. Hey man, this is what we do over here. If they don't get out and call you, why you go fuck with them? You notice what we do. We went inside the juvenile facility mm -hmm. and met them young niggas. That's right. We told them what we can do, what we will do when they get out, right? Their job is to make us a liar. Mr. Charleston said he'll do this when I get out. Nigga, if you want to rap, I'm going to take you over there to the studio. You'll get to meet him, him, him. If that's what you want to do. If you want to go to school, I'm going to go over here. So whatever you want to do, my nigga, make us a liar. So once we go inside and make contact, provide them with the alternative and the resource. When they come out, if they don't call, I ain't looking for them, nigga. No, the ones that's, they go call. You know how hard it is for an NBA young boy, a millionaire, multi-millionaire, and a poo shiesty that, that's got the, 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 the images they have and the power that they have going with their brands for, for them to change. That, that's a hard thing, man. I remember when Tupac uh, got out and uh, he went see, crazy. Gucci man changed. Gucci changed. Shit, all of them changed. Listen. Uh, the kind of trouble them boys in, they go change. Didn't I mean, Pooh Shice, not Pooh Shice, but that NBA young boy already writing them letters home. <laughs> Do you think that Gucci changed because of the lady that was there supporting yeah. him? Uh, that 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 plays a part. Uh, but uh, she ain't in that jail cell with him. Uh, many men change for a woman only to fall down behind the woman. The the change that it looked like he developed was an inner change. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Was a was a was a interchange. Uh, you know, a woman a woman plays a great great part in in, in motivating a man to change. Right, because uh, all of these other gentlemen that y'all were talking about, um, we never seen that woman. Uh, but 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 the woman can't change you. She won't change you. It's impossible for the woman to change you. You got to be changed for the woman show up. Because if 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 you start changing when the woman show up, then she changed you, not God. When, when, when God gave Eve to Adam, Adam was already complete. He already had a purpose. He already had an identity. He already had, he, he, you see what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. uh, why would a woman come up and, 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 and she have to change the man? That's a weak man. 
Mm-hmm. Now she she she's the head of the relationship. So what if she leave? Then what? That nigga never bounce back. So the man you just described is the man like my daddy was. When they fall down in life, they never get back up because they fell down behind a woman. Mm-hmm. Them be the weak niggas. So, man, you got to have something in you uh, to change you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what I wake up with every day. That's how I can stand before all of what I stand before and articulate and take on what I take on. My man, man, you think my wife and them, man, they got y'all. You think people don't be saying, girl, they got y'all address out there. Y'all ain't scared. I seen that. Man, you think my mama and them don't be saying some, man. Nick, you got to be bold. You got to be a bold nigga, man, to take on what I done took on. Mm-hmm. And I didn't set out to take this on, but there's no way that I can look at Rome and be quiet. Yeah, because you live a very dangerous lifestyle with all the threats that you've received and so forth and having a family, a wife, kids, and so forth. Well, in my mind, I think I take it for a game. I think everybody bullshitting. In my mind, I think it's a game. I think all the threats is a game. But you can always have that one person and you just probably haven't crossed that one person uh, yet. Man, they've been telling me that all my life. Mm. They, they told me, all right, if you ever get locked up, you better not go down there with that cocky attitude. Well, I got locked up and went down there with a cocky attitude. <laughs> Man, they said, if you do this to the police, man, I done done. So everything, so every, so maybe I'm the one that just won't happen to. Wow. Maybe I'm really this bad. Maybe I'm really this safe. With, maybe I'm really chosen by God. In mm. my mind, I am. So why would I behave any other way? Mm-hmm. You guys see me walk up and down this street with nothing on me. No gun, no knife, no weapon. M- man, and people are approaching me, record me. Hey, man, come over here and talk to me. Man, I don't have an ounce of fear. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I see that. And I, I, was I, just, witnessed I was just sleep in a public place where half of California walking by me. Yeah. Sleep, man, with my head laid back. No mask on, no nothing. Sleep like a motherfucker. Instead of saying, nigga, nigga, choke you to death out there. You just lay back there and sleep. Man, I can't fear. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you think, like, because I, I go back to the rap music a lot, you know. Do you think that the Jay Z's and these guys that are in these big positions, uh, the billionaires, do they? Do you think that that help is there for the youth? Are any of those people helping, like the Jay Z's? Listen, why should they? Why should a billionaire come help? Why should he come from all the way up there to down here when there's so much money down here? Why are we okay. looking up there to them? When we's blowing, when we don't do for our own kids, why are we looking for Jay Z and them to help us with our cousins and our homeboys and our homegirls and them kids? Because people in a whole who are in a bad situation, um, when they see someone who leave their community, yeah, he didn't start off a billionaire and made it. They're always looking for that person to turn back and reach back and help them. So who do so who do you help when you get your income tax, po motherfucker? (laughs) When you get your income tax money, who do you help? So why should they help us? When you get your money, who do you look back in your family and say, man, let me go help my niece over there. She got all them goddamn kids over there and she got a sour ass nigga yeah, over there. Yeah. So why would Jay-Z and them come help these people? When you help them, well, you already see what they do with their stimulus money. You already see what the people who run the, the, the people who run the, the, the little league sports team, you already see what they do with the money. They steal it. So who would give us money? We've already been proven what we'll do with our money. We're going to go buy a Cadillac. We're going to go buy the soul. Clothes, so why would those, so I learned that running a 501c3. They said, Charleston, why would anybody give you money? And they see you can't go get money from your own people. So why would they give us money and the people around us ain't giving us money? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't see that. I've always, I've always talked about a lack of education where stuff like that is concerned because it always hurts me when um, people get their income tax money and the first thing they go do is, you know, shopping and do all, instead of investing, instead of saving that money, putting it up, doing different things and help that money grow for you. No, uh-uh. <laughs> Don't do that. 
Y'all just said, that's what the billionaires is doing. Mm -hmm. But we want the billionaires to stop doing what you just said do and come help the people that won't do that. You want Jay, we want Jay-Z. We want Tyler Perry. We want Oprah Winfrey. We want all these billionaire black people to stop doing what you just said poor people should be doing with their income tax money. Mm -hmm. And they come give their money. God called that casting your money away to the casting swine. your swine, swine. Pearls swine. away to the swine. swine. Mm -hmm. So why would they cast to poor people? You go come create a program only for their kid to go to prison? Programs don't prevent children from going to prison. Mm -hmm. Home life does. That's true. Yeah. So do you feel like you think you should have recanted your statement on DMX? No, fuck DMX. Nigga dope fiend ass. Nigga, what I'm going to recant it for? Nigga died a dope fiend, man. But you had gotten a lot of hate from that stuff. Yeah, man. I wouldn't give a damn. Even from friends. I wouldn't give a damn. They ain't helped me pay now. Bill, my sheet's still clean. Me and my wife still fuck like we love each other. Uh, nigga, what think I give a damn about a motherfucker mad about what I done say? Nigga, fuck everybody who mad about DMA. They ain't sent his children nothing. They ain't even mentioned his name. Matter of fact, I ain't even heard a DMX song, nigga. That's, I told y'all wasn't nobody even gonna be mentioned. Had y'all not brought him up, wasn't no anybody think about that motherfucker. It, it, you th it, it was just pretty much water under the bridge after Man, two months. Once a dope fiend nigga die, uh, he wasn't no hell of a nigga in the world. Nobody cares about rappers but poor people. And I ain't poor. Nobody cares about rappers, homie, dead or alive. Wow. So... <clears throat> So w w w the next thing I can I can think of is is how do we how do we change the narrative for for uh, a, a, a better a better society? Fuck the narrative, nigga. <laughs> it ain't no better society. Get you some goddamn money, take care of your woman and your kids, and have fun, nigga. Ain't no ain't no better. This has to come to an end, fam. Wow. This world is coming to an end. It ain't starting over again. It's getting uglier and uglier by the day. Our children will see worse things. Our children will go through things like the nigga went through. And we can't imagine that, but they will. So we can't change that. All we can do is prepare for what we think's coming. And I'm going to bring this up one more time. When I, when I heard Mob James say uh, Charleston White, he confuses and he says he want to help in one instance, but then after he say that, you know, what he says contradicts what he's trying to do. Well, I keep telling you stupid motherfuckers, quit listening to what I say and pay attention to what I do in real life. Cause I get on her and say any motherfucking thing. Just the other day I got on her and say, man, I cheat on my wife. You think my wife, baby, man, baby, don't pay attention. Now, I say any goddamn thing on her. <laughs> Nigga, I flash my dick on her. Why are you paying attention to what I say? And I thought actions speak louder than words. Correct. See, in the video, Dewberry tried to jump up and tell y'all, man, why well, y'all know why I speak in school? Because of that nigga right there. I know he say a bunch of shit, but my actions go contrary to what I say. Yeah. And I'm a hypocrite for that. But so uh, is everybody else, because everybody else talk that black power and black revolutionary talk and pro-black talk and don't do a goddamn thing in real life. That's true. So wow. think about that. I'm on here talking like I don't do none of this. I get on the internet and talk like I don't help children. But in real life, I help children. Definitely. There are millions of people on here talking like they do this in life and they, do, and they don't do none of this. People like Mob James. He don't do none of what he's saying he do. They don't do none of that shit. But they sound good on it. I can name some more names. They can name all kind of foundations of what they do. But nigga, they don't do this shit in real life like me. So I got the right to say what the fuck I want to say. Because when the microphone go off, the character get put up in the corner. That's what they keep forgetting. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I won't say it again, man. I be I, like I said, I have been out here with you, and um, I see the people. They approach you, they know you, they looking for you. They you you uh, basically they loving it. The, the the girl earlier that you was doing the uh, the uh, marketing for. Oh really. yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the hood goodies. Yeah, yeah the hood, yeah, hood, hood goodies. goodies. Yeah, um, they love it, man, and 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 they love you. Most of the people say, "Hey, man." We love the realness. We want to hear something real. When you talk, mm -hmm. is something that marinates with me. You know, I like what you're doing, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. How does that make you feel, man? Oh, uh, oh, uh, it's 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 uh it's rewarding. The the internet is is a deception. The internet is thirty five to forty percent real because they don't give you. 
they don't give you the before story to a video. So you don't know what's happening. You're just looking at something. The internet will have you believe that my life is in danger. The internet will have you to believe that uh, I can't go outside. The internet will have you believe that I'm hiding somewhere. Uh, the internet will have you believe that I'm the most hated person in America. But if you got off the internet and you came into real life, man, you'll start to believe, well, you'll start to see that the internet is full of shit. And you can't believe nothing that you get off the internet. It's distorted our reality. It's, 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 it's blinded people's perception. And perception is reality. Mm -hmm. So since your perception is blinded, the internet now is your reality. The internet now is most people's realities. And I'm capitalizing off that. I'm giving them a reality. So do you, do some people- And I'm having fun and, 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 and man, I feel powerful. I feel, I feel smarter than everybody. I feel, because they've given me this power. Man, they, the internet have given me, they gave me this power. They gave me this power. And what I choose to do with the power is promote nigga shit. Talk about things that affect poor nigga babies. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. I'm, so they've given me something that I'm using for my people, homie. So when I get that love, when I get that admiration, you see the smile on my face. Oh, yeah. You see that genuine smile, homie. Yeah. Yeah, I let my guards down. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man, let's take a picture. I play like I'm mean at first, but yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you see the genuine smile, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that um, uh, Wag 100 been hanging out, uh, I believe it was in Clubhouse with, with Takashi 69. Would you hang out with Takashi? Yeah, <laughs> he ain't done nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah, no, nigga, yeah, he ain't done nothing wrong. He ain't done nothing wrong by telling on somebody. <laughs> yeah, he was playing gangster, nigga. When you realize you playing gangster, find your way out. <laughs> when you realize you were playing. See, some niggas ain't playing and they don't say nothing. And they go in there and suffer like gangsters have to suffer. But boy, when you realize you playing, man, reach for a broom straw. Unk say a drowning man to reach for a broom straw. A drowning man in the ocean to look up there and grab that broom straw just hoping he can float. So no, nah, nigga, hell yeah, I hang out with Takashi 69. Sammy the Bull, uh, Miss Mary, they called the police on them niggas down the street because they kept popping too many fireworks two days after the 4th of July. I hang out with anybody that's willing to put the police on the niggas' ass. Yeah, they are great help to the community. Great help. Wow. Hey, man, thank you, man. You always give me what I'm looking for, man. Say, man, hey, man, we in Las Vegas, man. It's going down, man. I appreciate you, Charleston. We love you. Yes, That's a do. real statement, man. Yeah. And, uh, hey, we're going we, we gonna to continue to work helping the kids, helping whoever you bring by the store. We're going to clothe the kids. Whatever you say that's going down with them kids, you come find me. We're yeah, going to give something uh, away. Shout out to Miss King, man. You know, Man, uh, shout out to Miss King. Uh, I love her, man. She uh, gave us an award, man. Yeah, but one, one, one of the things, man, uh, she, she gave us a pipeline to children uh, that's returning uh, back, re-entering back into our society, back into our communities. Uh, and, 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 and we showed up in those kids' life. They didn't show up in ours, right? We came to a facility they was locked up in, and we spent a week with them kids, and we told them kids what we do, how we live, and then we made some promises to those children about uh, what we will do for them when they got out. Uh, and I just want to say, man, uh, every, every kid we done walk uh, every kid done walked out that juvenile facility uh, that came over to Boss Talk One on One. Mm -hmm. uh, help set them. You help set them. We help uh, set them. Yeah. Uh, on, on, on the path to redemption uh, and, and coming back in a positive light uh, back into our society. So uh, I appreciate you for that, brother. No, I appreciate you, man. Uh, just the things that you stood for help uh, uh, wake me up to say, hey, let's do more. And I appreciate you for that. That's one of the big things with me and you. 
I think that's why we stay connected the way we do is just trying to help people spending money where it need to be spent in the neighborhoods, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to East Texas. Same, man. Shout yeah, out to East, shout East, out East Texas, Texas, man. Y'all know y'all my new family, man. Y'all thanks to Boss Talk, man. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check it, man. That's coming straight from Charleston White, man. We love you, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.